Hello, I'm Eric Hanley. And I'm Mark Garner. We're the automation specialist with es &E. In this video, we are going to explain the benefits of using Automatic Device Configuration, or ADC. We will also discuss the steps necessary to set up an ADC using Studio 5000 Logic Designer and a PowerFlex 525 drive. Before we jump into our content, es &E offers online training and information through YouTube. Please like and subscribe to our es &E TV YouTube channel for how-to applications and other automation content. Rockwell Automation released a feature called ADC in RS Logix 5000 version 20 back in 2012. More details can be found in article QA56924 published in the Rockwell Knowledge Base. After its original release, more features and functionality were added and now ADC is also being added to additional products when possible, such as IO-Link sensors. ADC allows the controller to automatically load the saved drive parameter settings into the drive. This occurs when the Ethernet IP connection is initially established with the drive and the controller detects a difference with the saved configuration. This means you can still make edits to the drive parameters on the fly, but any parameters changed at the drive and not saved in the configuration file for the PLC will automatically be overridden next time an ethernet break or power cycle occurs. You can force ADC to never allow parameter changes unless they come from the PLC, and that can be done programmatically. Rockwell has an article explaining this setup in their knowledge base with an ID of QA63061. ADC is primarily used when replacing a drive, the main control board, or the optional cards. The controller will automatically load the saved configuration into the new module without the need of manually downloading the parameters into the new drive. Currently, PowerFlex 523, 525, 753, 755, and the 755T drives are supported with ADC. If the drives are set up for motion, such as 527 or 755 with SIP motion, then ADC is not necessary because the parameters are configured within the motion axis that controls the drive. It is always recommended to do your initial configuration and commissioning of the new equipment without ADC enabled. This will cause the additional steps along the way. After system is operating properly, you should enable ADC. So what steps are needed to configure a drive for ADC? First, we will need to add the drive to our IO configuration, which we will use default parameters. Then we will want to upload the drive parameters. In the drive module configuration, we will need to determine if we want to set up for disable, compatible module, or exact match. Compatible module is the default, and it can be left that way unless we want ADC to manage the firmware of our drive also. We can expand on ADC by having the controller manage the firmware. This can be done by adding the proper firmware to the SD card in the controller and enabling the firmware in the controller properties. First, we'll open controller properties. Then select non-volatile memory and press the store button, ensuring the firmware checkbox is checked. The firmware will need to be loaded onto the SD in the proper directory, which is the same directory set up in control flash. If we are managing the firmware, then we must also change the module definition to exact match. In the module definition, you will see the tab called Automatic Device Configuration. Once you select the tab, you will see the checkbox to enable ADC and select the proper port. It's important to select the proper port if you have multiple communication paths to the drive. Once the module definition is set up and we've uploaded the parameter set, you will need to save the file and download it to the controller. It's important to save the ACD file with a new configuration prior to downloading it to the controller. Once the drive is set up for ADC and the ACD file is downloaded to the controller, you will no longer need to download it to make changes. So you can adjust the parameters for the drive while online and then save the file and it will retain those values in the configuration. If someone else has made a change when opening the module properties, it will ask you if you want to use the offline file configuration or device configuration. Depending on the situation, you could choose either option. That's all the configuration needed to set up ADC on a PowerFlex 525. But this requires that you set an IP address with the drive. 
Another way to expand even more is to implement a manage switch that can assign an IP address to the drive based on the port that you plug the drive into. This is outside of the drive configuration and it is called DHCP persistence. DHCP persistence allows you to assign a specific IP address based on each port of the managed switch. With a managed switch, firmware manager, and ADC, you will be able to unplug a failed drive, install a new one, and be back up and running in a matter of minutes. Out of the box, the PowerFlex drives are set up for DHCP slash boot P. So the switch will assign the address. Once the address is seen by the controller, it will run the firmware manager. If the firmware is different, it will download the proper firmware. If it is the same, then it will start checking the parameters of the drive. If any differences are found, it will automatically update them and the whole system will go back into operation. To show this in action, we have a drive set up and it is connected to our controller, which is configured for ADC. Here is our module definition set up for electronic keying exact match. This means the drive's firmware and parameters must match exactly the configuration stored in the controller. If the electronic keying was left to the default setting of compatible, the controller does not verify the drive's firmware and only verifies the parameters. We can show that the drive is running. Then we can adjust the motor RPM parameter P36 to 1950 from 1750. The drive will keep that configuration until we disconnect the ethernet cable which will fault the drive. Once we plug the ethernet cable back in, the fault will clear and show ADC is active. This will return the value back to 1750 and the system can be restarted back to run. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact your local ESNE account manager or automation specialist.